Good morning, I'm Michael Raftery. I'm the President and CEO of CRS Power LLC. And I'm here today to introduce our wave energy harnessing device. So, um, the main mainstream media, politicians, they basically have overlooked our, our wave energy resource in the United States. It's a, if you just, common sense tells you it's a large scale resource. And uh, so, most of the media is looking at solar power, wind power as our solutions to our, our the uh, energy crisis that's approaching. But um, right here off New Jersey, we have a significant amount of wave energy. Um, from 20 to 70 miles offshore, we have on the order of uh, 10 gigawatts worth of wave energy we can harness technically available. So that scale of uh, energy needs to be interesting. And when you're 20 to 70 miles offshore, you don't have the, the visual issues or you're far enough offshore to stay out of commercial shipping lanes. Um, fishermen aren't, aren't very interested in that area. It's a lot of barren sands out there. But 5,000 square miles to put up wave energy devices where we can get on the order of 10 gigawatts of power is significant. So with that, I just want to kind of put a slide up here of how much ocean power is out there. So uh, this quote's from Dr. Mary, and she uh, she has a lot of agreement. University of Michigan agrees with this too. 0.1% of the global ocean energy can power the whole world five times over. Um, at Seahorse, we're emphasizing on harnessing surface waves, which is a significant portion, 30 to 40% of the total global energy resource. The other portions are currents and tides and thermal gradients. So we're looking to get into the industrial electricity market. We're looking to put in things in a 5,000 square mile area, on the order of gigawatts, we're looking to compete with new coal plants, new nuclear plants. So the industry in 2007, just for electricity, was $365 billion. So why, hasn't, why haven't people developed wave energy? Well, there's been attempts. There have been numerous attempts. But people put things in the water before they're ready. There's been three uh, significant sinkings in the industry. The United Kingdom is leading a lot of this research. But in 1996, the wave gen Osprey, before it generated one watt of power, sank. So we've learned lessons from survivability is paramount in this industry. Once we build something to survive, we have plenty of power available. So what we've done is we basically came up with a simple solution. At CR Suite, we took existing barges, standard barge, 100 feet by 40 feet wide, and we modified it with integrated wave power takeoff. So the barge we designed can be lowered to the sea floor. It's a submersible barge. We fill compartments with foam, so even if the, all the compartments flood, the barge is still buoyant. And it can, during big storms, large wave periods, we can lower the barge near the sea floor for safety. But in mild and moderate conditions, we raise the barge up near the surface. It turns out wave energy is a lot easier to concentrate than solar or wind energy. We also have uh, energy, we've designed an energy storage capability. So we use what's called hydraulic accumulators, or just big cylinders, compressed gas. We have 240 cylinders on this barge. That equates to, at 3,000 PSI, it's 100 kilowatt hours of energy storage. So because we can concentrate waves over our platform, it lets us triple the wave energy density hitting a surface flow. So what that does essentially is make our cost per kilowatt hour over a life cycle one third of existing wave devices. So we compete head to head with onshore wind. And if you look at onshore wind, the big places for onshore wind in the Midwest. So in the Midwest, you can have a thousand square miles of wind turbines and not interrupt a lot of views or houses, but you have to take that electricity a thousand miles to get to load centers like New Jersey or New York. We're looking to put in 20 to 70 miles offshore, a lot shorter power cable distance. And actually, solar is still very expensive over a life cycle, and offshore wind is still fairly expensive. So. Here's our R&D progress. We've proven with scale models that we can focus this wave power. You're, you should be asking yourself, how can you possibly triple the wave power over existing systems? Well, we, we uh, basically took designs from the oil industry, submerged, semi-submersible platforms, intentionally platforms, and we, we determined that a near-surface platform is a very effective method of focusing wave energy. So what you see in this image is a, 
a submerged tension lake platform that's focusing wave power onto a surface flow. The accelerations and velocities on this float are three to four times greater than you could ever get from a, a, a just naturally occurring wave. But to tune that wave in, a, in an array of devices, we don't want the wave to break like it was in the last image. So an ideal wave tuning and focusing will triple the wave power and speed of the buoy, but we won't break the wave. So our technology design features is basically, as I mentioned, it's a barge. The barge you see in this image, during mild and moderate waves, we raise the barge up near those floats and concentrate the wave, tower, wave power onto the floats. And then in, in um, storms or extreme seas, we lower the barge down near the seafloor to minimize the anchor loading on the platform. As I mentioned, we have compressed gas energy storage. So for our sales models, we think with this wave concentrating ability that uh, we can demand 10% uh, license agreements with this kind of leverage. We are the only company interested in the East Coast right now. The average wave power off East Coast is 7 kilowatts per meter wave crest. Uh, existing first generation companies aren't even interested unless there's 20, 20 kilowatts per meter wave crest. We're looking to partner with big oil companies and operators like Transocean, National Oil Well Varco. And if we can get 12 cents a kilowatt hour, that equates to $1 for every watt you have per year. So if you have a megawatt system, when you're producing a megawatt, you generate over a million dollars of revenue per year at that sales price. And of course, we're going to leverage our carbon credits. Our management team, everyone on this team is well versed in the offshore energy industry. We all know the ins and outs of um, Dr. Marino and uh, Tamara Wainer have done an after-tax analysis on our work. Dr. Christos Delatos to help us network with uh, our current development partners, Bosch Rexroth and Airline Hydraulics, and Malcolm Seeking Corporate and uh, Government Funding for us. And I'm also a research engineer at the Center for Maritime Science Systems, where I'm surrounded by brilliant people, including naval architects and ocean engineers. Uh, in the U.S., we have competition. We currently call them competition. Uh, ocean Power Technologies, we'd be happy to partner with them because we believe we could work with these first generation devices, focus wave energy onto their platforms, and increase their output. Um, our main global competitor is Palamis Limited. They're out of the UK. The United Kingdom has 16 of the 35 pre-commercial wave energy companies in the world. The UK is leading the world in wave energy because um, there's no oil in the UK. So, and, and they have a very energetic wave climate. All of our major competitors have raised a significant amount of capital. OPT's um, IPO was $90 million. So in summary, here's what our industry, it, the bleeding edge is passing. OPT has pilot projects in, um, Palamas has had pilot projects in the water, they're learning lessons and we're learning from their lessons. We learn from their mistakes, why their hydraulic pistons fail, why they sink. So we took their lessons and we're improving on them. We still know that survivability is paramount and efficiency is critical. In our business, we have two file patent applications. I worked very diligently with the members of GT Law. Appreciate their help a lot. I think we wrote two extremely uh, rigorous patents. And we have support from the Center for Maritime Systems. And we have a winning team of engineering and business experts. Our going forward strategy, we'd like to uh, accumulate $7.5 million to build out a full-scale prototype, um, 100 feet long by 40 feet wide and um, tested in our local waters here in New Jersey. Here's my contact information. If you have any questions about wave energy or CR's power in general, please contact me. Thank you.